everybody. Thanks for tuning in to Border City Rock Talk, where you get great news, great interviews, great interviewees with sometimes a comedic touch. Make Ooh, sure yeah. to subscribe to the channel, hit the like button, and comment below. Before I go any further, I'm going to go further and say, hey, how are you doing, Steve? I'm doing great, Ernest. Thanks for having me on the show. It's a pleasure. Absolutely. Now, we're having some technical difficulties, difficulties with video, so... Just to prove that this is really Steve Plunkett of uh, Turn Up Radio and Autograph and Aaron Spelling and all that fame, can you uh, maybe uh, sing a bar like day in, day out, all night long, things go better with rock, just so we know it's you and not an imposter? Day in, day out, all week long, things go better with rock. It is Steve Plunkett. How you? Oh, man, this is awesome. Um, everybody knows uh, that song. I mean... I don't know, like, I, I think I read it was one of the top 100 most played songs, but you, you can see that in a different magazine and a different song, but it is definitely one of the most popular songs that people are going to listen to in their car radios or, you know, just traveling and stuff like that. How many times do you get asked or somebody says, I heard that you wrote, you're a co-writer on that song. Like, how often does that song come up in conversation? These days. Well, uh, that song always comes up when I'm talking to rock and roll people, uh, okay. people that would have been around in that time period uh, in the 80s, listen to 80s rock. Uh, and that song, I'm grateful that it's had such longevity. It still gets a ton of airplay today. Uh, it was, as you mentioned, one of VH1's 100 Greatest Rock Songs. Uh, it's been in in all kinds of productions and albums. And, um, you know, it's been a uh, a great run and I'm happy people still remember it. Yeah, I mean, it's just dynamite. And I was telling you before we uh, started to record here that um, where I live um, on the border with our sister city, Sioux, Michigan, there was a famous bar that's still around called the Savoy and this owner, Sam. If Sam, if you're watching this, man, at least subscribe. I'm, I'm pushing your bar. Everybody go to Sam's place, Savoy, Sioux, Michigan. But he would play that song about 8 o'clock p.m. when when the drinkers would get there, uh, like me um, back then. And you'd hear it two or three times during the night. It was just a favorite. Um, it's just like one of those most famous, uh, not more, one of those most famous, but he was just so enamored with that song. I mean, like, it was just a classic song. So when you guys are writing that, did you guys feel that this was a classic? Like, did you, like, everybody would say that about some of their better songs, but was there something special that you would say, yeah, you know what, guys, I, I did feel that there's something deeper? Uh, not at all. That song came out of a jam session. Uh, <clears throat> one night, we just kind of jammed into the music. Uh, the next day, I wrote the lyric and the melody and before rehearsal, went in and sang it, and Great. Let's let's uh, add this to the album, which uh, you know RCA wasn't wild about it, but they say okay, you need one more song, so put this on the uh, sign in please record, which we did. Um, and even when the record was complete, we all loved the song. It was a good good time, good feeling song, but we didn't think it was a single or anything special, and. You know, they released the album, sent it to radio, and it that song started to gain a little bit of traction. Mm -hmm. But um, it really didn't click until a promotion man from RCA Records had an idea for an edit. And he said, you know, Steve Lynch is such a fabulous guitar player, and we need to let radio know about this, uh, how, you know, how great he is. He said, can you uh, can you go in the studio and start this song with a, like a guitar solo type of thing? And we uh, so we went back in the studio and we edited on that whole intro as a as a basis, a bed for Steve Lynch to play that incredible opening guitar solo. Once that was on, then the song clicked. Wow. I mean, um, I think I know my musicology and 80s rock and that sort of thing but i did not know that wow so the original song was just basically the rhythm 
and the rhythm yeah, guitar started with again? The, started with the riff, you know, the whole band and the riff, yep. um, right into the song. And then we we took that promo guy's advice. We hooked on that whole intro. RCA heard it, and immediately they said, stop the presses. We're adding this version to the album. And then from that point on, all pressings and and uh, cassettes and anything they were putting out had that version and it immediately went to radio. Things wow. clicked right then and that's when the song really took off. So you'd be paying attention to this back then. Was there any other um, songs that right after that started off with a guitar, kind of a, more of a soloish melody that you can think of? Was that kind of something that maybe the... I don't know the um the business manager is thinking okay this is something that's might might be kind of clickbait so let's start this song out with the guitar well, was there anything that came after that or that you guys um, noticed not from us you okay. know radio wasn't playing a lot of that stuff they you know they could have played Van Halen's eruption into uh I think really that song segued into you really got me yeah um but they didn't so this was all one piece. Um, and, wow. you know, we didn't do that any, on any other cuts, but it really worked for that particular song. I'll tell you, did it ever. Um, before we get into your uh, your second studio album, Straight Up, um, and I was going to ask you, how come you've only had two solo albums? But, I mean, let's go with what you're doing, what you've done. Like, people don't realize just be aside from that genius stuff, talk about what's behind me. Uh, 150 songs you 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 co-wrote or you wrote for Beverly Hills 90210? Uh, yeah, um, I, uh -huh. I wrote a lot of songs in the original episodes, 90210, Melrose Place, Charmed, uh, Seventh Heaven. Right, all of this, yeah. All of the Aaron Spelling songs I was writing a lot of songs for. And then... Um, Later on, they decided to re-release all of these uh, shows on DVD for home video. Mm -hmm. And that's when I wrote 150 songs for 90210 because uh, they had to replace all the music. All the original contracts did not mention uh, home video because it didn't exist at that point. So rather than try to make 150 new deals with writers and publishers. Uh, they called me and I I wrote a lot of music. <laughs> so are, are you are you talking, Steve, about writing full length? Like let's let's talk about just generalities. Unless you're Iron Maiden, like a general song, to me anyway, it's gonna be three to four minutes. Are you talking about you wrote 150 three to four minute songs just for that show? Or are you talking yes. about intros or no for that show. They were they were full songs, yeah. Wow. So, you know, they may have only used 40 seconds yeah. or one minute, but they were full songs. Yeah. So I, talking, I have a hard time writing <laughs> less than a full song. You're talking about like when we're watching like an episode when they're um, whatever, like, I don't know where they are. They might be um, Luke Perry or whatever, but in the background, you're going to hear music and that's what you're talking about. Or you're talking about when one of the musicians, I remember this one guy, um, he was like kind of a stud on the show. Like he wasn't one of the main characters, but he come in and play some acoustic shit. Are you talking about you wrote songs for him or I'm trying to think of his uh, name? No, um, I'm I'm talking about songs that you'd hear, you know, they're driving down the street on the radio. Yeah. Uh, background, all of that kind of stuff. When when they would have uh, what that's called a featured performance. And okay. An artist or a musician comes in and plays. That's a sec a uh, separate thing. Oh, okay. Um, you, you, it's really, really almost impossible to replace that because you have the video and the lip syncing mm -hmm. and all that stuff. Oh, okay. So this was before from, AI. Yeah, for sure. AI. Oh, every time I'm watching, like, I don't really watch TV. Like I'm like on my, my laptop and I'll watch just, I don't know. Uh, I'll get my news and stuff like that. But if I'm at my mother's house or whatever, I'll watch a bit of TV and every commercial coming up is like the people are AI. Like, have you noticed <laughs> that? Like, it's not even human I beings anymore. I'm not I into can tell, it. Because no. I'm still a human being. I can tell. But uh, aside from, you know, I mean, the great stuff you did with Seventh Heaven and Melrose Place. And um, you ever see that Seinfeld episode where um, 
Jerry doesn't want to, to admit that he watched Melrose Place? <laughs> I Did think I've watch? seen every, every Seinfeld episode, yeah, and maybe twice. Yeah, it was the episode where um, there's the polygraph uh, taker and uh, Kramer was going in as a, like, you know when you go into a lineup, well, you don't know, I don't know, but yeah. a lineup to see if you're a criminal, <laughs> they pay you 20 right. bucks just to stand there. Well, it's that same freaking episode, then <laughs> Jerry meets and starts dating this um, woman that's a police officer, and she wants him to take the poly. And they say, <laughs> you watch Melrose Place? And he's like, no. And it feels like a big crank in the thing. is like, uh, uh, that's hilarious. I watched it. That's hilarious. Yeah. So you've actually you've actually done a lot more writing. You've written for like Cindy, excuse me, Cindy Lauper, um, Vixen. Tell me about those songs, like the two huge songs. Uh, you know, I, I had a couple songs on uh, second Vixen album. The first single, "How Much Love." Is, you want to say uh, hi to Chris Oliver and Roxy? <laughs> to <Imagine>. who? <laughs> uh, anyway, yeah, yeah. and uh, I wrote the. That song, How Much Love, with uh, a buddy yeah. of mine, Jack Conrad. Right. Uh, Jack Conrad was an incredible songwriter. He wrote uh, If Looks Could Kill for Heart. Oh, he wow. Wrote, okay. All of the baby's hits, Isn't It Time, Every Time I Think of You, uh, plus hits for Three Dog Night. And we did a lot of lot of writing together. And the Vixen thing, we we just kind of collaborated on, and it it turned out good. Great, you know, good for the band, good for us. Right. And then um, another um, musician that you've uh, written for was Mark Anthony? Uh, no. Uh, yeah, I actually did write a song, Mark Anthony. Um, How was it working with um, one of the ex Van Halen guys? Hey, oh, I'm joking, <laughs> not the same guy. Uh, I'd, like, I'd love to work with Michael. Um, no, I did a, a, a lot of, I did a two seasons of music or HBO had a series called Happily Ever After, an uh, right. animated oh, yeah. series where they remade fairy tales. And I was the main writer uh, for that series and did a lot of productions. That's when I worked with um, Mark Anthony and Cindy Lauper and uh, Pete John Cicada, people like that, Loretta Lynn. Um, so, um, yeah, that was a great project and, and was really happy to be involved. Yeah, for sure. Um, before we get into talking about the uh, the new, um, uh, your second solo album, Straight Up, um, recently, well, actually, no, I'm going to ask you this because I, I don't know. Um, I, I just recently interviewed Regina, I'm sure you're aware. Um, now, With who? Regina Rand. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, I don't are, actually are, know her. Oh, okay. Are you going to be going down to Cleveland? No. For the <laughs> Hall of Fame? I'm not. Oh, okay. See, I'm sorry. That's why we talked earlier. I didn't. I didn't realize you weren't going to be in attendance because um, they're going to be in the in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame is going to have memorabilia from the original autograph members, correct? Uh yeah, I did hear about that. Okay, so I didn't realize you you didn't um, you weren't participating. But in any event, um, you talked to Steve Lynch today, and um, Steve is a, is is such a good guy. I got to thank him for um you know everything. I don't know where that went. I might edit this out, Steve. <laughs> so I think he called you Plunky. Is that uh, the guys in the band called me Plunk? Where does that come from? Well, we had yeah. three. <laughs> we had three Steves. We had to have nicknames. Yeah, and then um, one of them. And then of course the was... drummer's nickname was Steve. Right. Uh, right. So that made it harder. So Plunky comes from Plunkett, I'm sure. Yeah, exactly. Okay. All right, my friend. Um, okay, so Straight Up is out. Is it out now? I think it is. It comes out uh, July 29th. Okay, my mistake. Just the first single is out now. Okay, I did see that, right. So everybody, before we... we right now, everybody, go down below, um, and the uh, link is going to be to Cleopatra Records. Um, check out the album. Now, your first album, um, you had Louie Louie on there. Is there going to be um, any other kind of a historical, um, how do you say, a cover on this one? No, this is all original, 10, 10 original songs. It's all straight ahead rock, what I call it. That's why the album's called Straight Up. It's guitar, bass, drums, vocals, and a lot of hooks. It's all up-tempo rock, no ballads. 
No, uh, I don't think there's any filler. No okay. cover songs. It's good time uh, music. Turn turn it up all the way and, and have some fun. Drinking it to 11. Turn it up to 11 and beyond. Speaking of which, um, you're, you're in California, correct? Correct. Okay. So I don't know why I'm thinking of this with uh, California, but Spinal Tap uh, 2 is coming out. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? Do you have any thoughts on if they should have re, you know, left a, a legendary movie as a, as a, you know, just a one-off? Or do you think um, before seeing it that they might be risking a bit of uh, the legacy? I don't know. I, I love this question because um, I want to see the movie so bad. I didn't know it was coming out. Um, yeah. I'm surprised to hear that. Paul McCartney's uh, even played in a cameo in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, um, well, started... they're going to have a hard time beating that first movie. That's that's a classic. Um, hopefully, they will, but or equal it. Well, the way I look at it is because Harry Shearer is so freaking talented with writing for this, or excuse me, voicing in The Simpsons and stuff like that. I, I I've never had like a second uh, thought about it's going to be like okay, one of those where the second one's going to be like a, you know a thumbs down. So I've got all, all kinds of faith in Christopher Guest, Michael McKeon, and Harry Shearer. But um, yeah, I can't wait for it. It's, I think they started filming it in March. And all wow. that. Yeah, I don't know all the pre-production stuff. But yeah, that's coming out. I don't know why I thought about California, Steve Plunkett, and Spinal Tap. <laughs> I did. <laughs> so, yeah. in, in your band, who, who recorded with you, Steve? Uh, for this, on, um, this album, album. on this album, I played everything. Is that right? Yeah. So you're getting royalties times singer, bass, guitar, drummer. You get <laughs> four times royalties. Well, uh, it's just easier, you know. Uh, this some of this was done during COVID when I, oh, okay. I had more time, yeah. and I have a, a home studio, right. so I can work my own hours, do my own stuff. Once I get plug in my guitar, get a sound I like, I start playing, I start jamming. Maybe I got a lyric idea and one thing leads to another. I don't want to stop and, hey, can you come over and play some bass, man? Um, right down the street or, you know, I just well, go. Well, yeah, I just don't know if you're aware, but we don't have to do that anymore because of uh, tech. But I mean, it's, it's, it's still... Um, more, better and natural to have everybody in the same room so you yourself you and you <laughs> but back, <laughs> exactly. back in the day all the guys were in the same room like what do you feel about that um these days when i talk to a lot of um the talent i'm talking to they do a lot of this stuff remote where they'll send over the guitar riff or they'll send over the the solo and then um the album gets put together through different pieces of around the world so what do you, what do you think about that what was what would you think is better, being in the same room, or it, to you it doesn't really matter as long as the um, talent is there? Well, if if you're in a band mm -hmm. that rehearses together, plays together, I think it's better to be in the same room. Mm -hmm. um, but it works both ways equally well. I was in, uh, I had a little group together. Oh, boy, this was, I think, mid-90s, kind of before that started rolling, that was a virtual band. None of us were ever all together. Right. Um, and it worked out. It worked out fine. Um, these days, as you say, with technology, uh, nothing's impossible. <laughs> right. So it, it saves a lot of gas money. This is true. This is true. Um, I'd like to thank you very much for your time. I know that you... Um, I, I don't know if you're an introvert or not, but you don't do too, too much press. I mean, you, you're a family man and stuff like that. So I just got to ask you two quick questions. What's the opposite of unsubscribe? <laughs> I would have to say subscribe, right? Yeah. Everybody subscribe to the channel as a uh, legendary singer, guitar player, songwriter, Steve Plunkett says. And if you had to name a favorite Canadian um, musician, artist, um, maybe personality, who would it be? Well, I'm a huge, huge fan of Brian Adams, always have been. Played some shows with him. Uh, wow. Went on stage and sang Cuts Like a Knife with him. Is that right? Uh, wow. Wow. He's an incredible, in my mind, 
songwriter. You know, my, my main focus in my career is songwriting. Right. Um, and there's few people as good as Brian. Uh, so yeah, if I'm going to name somebody Canadian, that would definitely be on the list. There, there's lots of great Canadian artists, starting with the Guess Who, mm -hmm. uh, Nick Gilder, you yeah. know, people like that. Kim Mitchell. Yeah. Kim Mitchell, yeah, for sure, for sure. Wow. Awesome. First time uh, in a while people didn't say rush. <laughs> it's always <laughs> a rush. And I still haven't got an interview with Getty or Alice, but I'm still trying. Um, <laughs> so everybody go down to the links below and click on Cleopatra and um, and check out the new album from Steve Plunkett. And uh, once again, Steve, I'd like to thank you for your time. All right, Ernest, it's been a pleasure. And uh, I hope uh, hope you like the record and uh, we'll talk again. Perfect.